Hello everyone, my name is Piotr Kononov and I'm a founder and product manager of Dataido. And today I'd like to talk to you about uh, how to document a database to make it more manageable. Uh, there's a number of challenges when you're working with databases, uh, when you're designing them or querying or doing any kinds of analytics. And I will list uh, a number of those challenges and show you practical tips how we can mitigate those, those challenges with, uh, with a good, useful documentation. Um, after this, this, this part, I will show you the data Edo tool, how we can get started with building uh, your documentation right away and how you can share it with your team. And at the end, I will uh, answer your questions. If you have any questions, uh, use the uh, questions tab on your right hand side and I will review them at the end. Okay, let's get started. So the first uh, solution uh, I'd like to advise you is to find a good fortune teller. <laughs> Obviously it's not a very practical solution. Uh, so um, let's, let's get more serious. And what I will actually advise you to do is to use a good documentation tool. And uh, I, I would like to encourage you to use uh, Data Edo. You can do it uh, after uh, my presentation. There's a 30 day free trial. Um, so we can uh, try to get, get started uh, even today. Okay, Data Edo is a uh, documentation tool based on the repository. Uh, every, you, you can import all your uh, database, all, schema of all your databases into one repository, then document all the elements and share it with your with your colleagues uh, in convenient uh, HTML documentation, which I'll show you in the later part. Okay, now let's get to the challenges. So challenge number one, where can I find this data? Many databases have uh, uh, plenty of uh, tables. They have confusing names. So let's say you're, you're trying to build a report and you need the uh, customers and orders uh, data. So how do you start? You, well, you can ask people, uh, but if you don't have anyone to ask, uh, you need to go into connect to the database and just go table by table trying to figure this out. It's not always practical. The tables are not, uh, they don't, don't always have the meaningful names. They sometimes have misleading uh, names. So my solution to this is to provide an alias uh, within the data documentation itself. So you can see over here uh, that uh, there is there is a table called res and that that is totally confusing and unclear what it is so i have provided a meaningful alias called resources so now everybody who will access the documentation will know uh, what it is uh, what it actually rep represents and it will be able to they will be able to to search for it and find it easily um and the other solution, which uh, comes in the next point, is to group uh, objects into uh, something we call modules. So let's get uh, to the next one. Challenge number two, what are all those tables? What you can see on the screen right now is a list of tables from Oracle applications. Um, so all those tiny dots are represent one table or uh, one view. It's not completely overwhelming. Um, so how do we deal with this? So I propose a simple uh, solution uh, and that is to group uh, those uh, objects into uh, so-called modules. So what you can see over here are, are modules and I have uh, assigned a, some specific tables to, 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 to certain uh, modules. Um, yeah, that way I will be able to narrow my search so if i'm looking for orders orders uh, information or customers information i will go first into specific modules and that way they are very small and manageable, manageable uh, pieces of the database challenge number three what is this table for so i have found this table uh, it's called dm or the q agr hgr yeah right and it has some columns I have no clue uh, what that is for. Can I use it? I mean, what, what it actually is. It's, it's quite, you, you'll get this question quite often when you are going through database and yeah, you'll figure out what, what are, are, you, are you actually looking at? So my solution to this 
is to, as previously, provide meaningful title alias, assign module, and assign owner. So if you, uh, if you now look at this, it makes much more sense. So you know that this is an aggregate for uh, quarterly orders. Uh, you know that this was used for something called quarterly sales reporting. Uh, that that can be meaningful for to you. You might know uh, that there is such a, an application or reporting system uh, called uh, that way. And now you know what is it is used for. When you provide an owner, you know who to talk to. So uh, having this information is so much easier than having just this. Challenge number four. What does this table hold? Mm, this is an example of a table from SAP system. Uh, as you can see, those names of table and columns are very, very cryptic. So th this comes from the very old times where engineers try to save uh, space and yeah, they thought that you know four or five letter naming would be good for everybody. Well, that's not the case. Uh, when you look at this table, you have no clue what, what actually you're looking at. So our solution. Oh yeah, and uh, not only uh, not only saving space might be the reason. Sometimes uh, it's just a lazy lazy architect, right? Okay. So my solution: uh, titles and uh, yeses and the descriptions. So have a look below. Right now, this is so much easier. Uh, to figure out what this actually is. So you can see that those actual names of those those fields, they do not, they are not even close, right? So you wouldn't be able to guess just by looking at the name. Uh, SAP is a very extreme example, but I'm sure you will have this kind of experiences uh, with other data databases as well. Challenge number five. Is this table still being used? So you're going through the list of tables and you're wondering, yeah, well, are, are there, can I use it? Is it actually being still used? So our solution, uh, add an, a status field and provide it for every table. That way you know where, where in the life cycle this table actually is right now. You can have multiple labels, you can define them there yourself. So in this case, you can see that illustration table is, is deprecated. You cannot, you shouldn't be using this uh, anymore. Challenge number six, who created this table? Similar to the, the to the previously uh, um, previous one, uh, you go through the list of tables and you were wondering, was this de delivered by the vendor or is it something we have created? Was it, was it me or some of my colleagues? Again, you, you add a simple, column owner, you provide uh, some labels and that way is, is so much more manageable. You actually know right now who you should talk to about the table. Challenge number seven, um, which columns should I care about, care for? So uh, you have an example of uh, on the screen from the Oracle application, which is a packaged application for uh, multiple purposes and uh, quite often they have uh, many, many columns designed for uh, generic purposes or something that should be determined uh, at the implementation time. So you can see there's a number of attribute columns and you have no idea what, is it actually something that's holding any data? Quite often it doesn't and you shouldn't be bothered with, with this at all. And again, my, our solution is to uh, add a status mm, field. Uh, you could also provide a alias over here that is says unused or ignore or something like that. That way you can focus your your, your energy uh, on the, on actually what what actually holds some data meaningful to you. Ch challenge number uh, eight. Where does this data come from? So I have a, a dimension table from a data warehouse on my screen and I'm wondering, did that come from CRM or did that come from our ordering system or so wh where is it from? So you could add a simple list of uh, metadata fields uh, where that should, would tell you what's the source system, what's the, what's the source table even or column. Um, challenge number nine, how to calculate this value? So most of the data is uh, preserved in the tables, but some of it 
is uh, derivative. So you you need to uh, do some calculations uh, or string concatenation to to get uh, to get certain certain values, and it's not obvious. Let me give you some examples. First one is an invoice amount. Uh, you get the invoice amount by adding net amount and tax. So this is quite quite obvious, assuming uh, somebody knows that net amount is not the invoice amount, right? Uh, but this one is quite quite easy. But let's imagine an ordering system that has so many different fields like quantity, quantity ordered, cancelled, ship, received, and, and so on. So how do you actually know what was actually, you know, purchased by, by the uh, customer or what was delivered and, and so on. That could be tricky or quite often impossible to, to reverse engineer that. And it would be definitely a waste of time to figure that out every time you want to write a report uh, showing this number. Uh, example number three, uh, this is something from my experience. Uh, uh, Imagine some documents have uh, complicated numbering systems, and this this well this ID is very important because it exists uh, in all the, all the all the printed documents, and it should be included in the reports. But how do you know how to get it? Um, it's often not; uh, uh, it doesn't exist as a field. It's a concatenation uh, from various uh, various fields. In this case, uh, the the first part is uh, depends on the type of the document. And the format of the rest depends on the title as well. So I have wasted like a day uh, to to try to figure out reverse engineer, looking at different uh, printed documents and trying to figure out different kinds of uh, documents to figure out the format. And that's a complete waste of time if somebody you know has done it in the first place. So our solution: create a manual column um, in the data dictionary. Uh, and provide a calculation formula. So imagine different uh, kinds of things you'd like to include in your reports, and then just provide a virtual column for it and provide a calculation that way. Uh, all you need to do is to look up at the, uh, look at the documentation and you're ready to go. You are uh, day ahead. Challenge number 10. What does a specific uh, value in a column represent? Let's take a very common example of status field. Uh, so we have, uh, you, you know, there is a status, but you know, what are the, you know, what are the values? What, what do they actually represent? So we have uh, query the table, and there are just single letters. So how do you figure out? Uh, you know, you, you could know that A is approved, but, uh, but let's say some, some, yeah, some examples. You don't have to a place where to check that out. So. Um, Simple solution, uh, list all the values in the documentation and provide the labels and, and explanations for those for those values. That saves a lot, lot of uh, work and uh, bugs in the reports. Uh, challenge number 11. Um, okay, so is there a lookup table for status? It's quite common that uh, these kind of uh, fields, they have those... those uh, Single codes, uh, simple codes, and sometimes there is a lookup table. Sometimes there is not. You would definitely like to know if there is a lookup table because, uh, well, you don't need to um, do a guesswork in the first place. Um, so, how do we deal with this? Mm, well, we show uh, the relationship. Uh, so, a foreign key to a table. We we show it uh, in the references uh, column. You can see that this this particular uh, field references the, 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 there is a lookup table called complaint statuses. And we get this information from uh, the foreign keys, but most of the time this kind of information is not defined in the database itself. So you need to do a little research. And when you find out the, the, the lookup table, you can uh, define this uh, this relationship over here with, within uh, our repository Using data Edo, you just define it as a foreign key, and that way that this information is is complete. So you know all the foreign keys to and lookup tables to 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 your table. Challenge number twelve: How do you join tables? That's a tricky one. Um, that's uh, extension of the previous one. Um, it's not always obvious how you can join tables. So. Uh, 
let me add to what I just uh, said. So uh, you, we use foreign keys. Uh, we show you those uh, next to the column. Uh, we show them also in tabular form, showing how the how, how the joins actually work. And also what you can do, once you have this information completed in your repository, you can, uh, oh, oh, so this is where you uh, define the, the foreign key. So this is the form. And once you have the information, you can visualize it with ear diagrams. So you do it in the number of smaller diagrams, and I will show that. Uh, later in my uh, demo of the tool. Challenge number 13. Uh, so what objects are used by this particular app, module, or functionality? Let's imagine you have a large database which is developed over uh, many years and you have created this small pieces, piece of functionality and you would like to know what tables are related to it, what uh, what procedures, uh, what, you know, the, what the logic sits in which kind, which kind of which, which procedures and, and so on. So again, the answer is create modules. So um, when you uh, create a module for a specific functionality, it could be a report, it could be some module in an application, it could be some separate uh, uh, application. You, you should define a module and then assign different types of objects to it. And that will give you a single page with a um, uh, description of this module, of this functionality, what it does, and, and so on. You can also provide additional information like a, like an owner uh, and so on. And you have a list of all the related objects. Challenge number 14. Uh, can I reuse this view? So views are very uh, practical and very tricky uh, at the same time. So views can uh, embed a lot of functionality, like I just said about those calculations. You can embed these calculations in a in a, in a view. Uh, however, um, views you can it's really easy to create views, and uh, uh, my experience tells me that people do not always uh, developers don't actually put so much energy into naming them and. It's, it's so easy to create them that after a while have hundreds of those, those views. And yeah, so when you find some, some view you think could you could reuse it from some other report, you have some uh, questions. Uh, so what, one is, what does that actually return? So is it actually the data I needed to need to get? And the other question is, was it, what is it used for? What was it created for? So the solution, um, describe the view, um, assign a module. So uh, by assigning module, will tell which kind of report that was used to, that was created for. When you reuse it, uh, assign it also for uh, uh, to the module representing the pieces of, piece of functionality you are currently working on. So the next person will know it's used right now by uh, two different uh, functionalities assign the owner uh, that will help you uh, to, to talk to the right person you know make sure you this is something you need and also um, to help you understand what it returns uh, because views are actually it's really easy to to make them uh, return the, uh, very different kinds of granularity of data so there can be duplicated roles uh, but maybe that's uh, that's the intention so uh, views themselves do not have uh, primary or unique keys. Um, some databases do allow that, but it's a, it's a minority. So what you should do is to create this, uh, uh, define the primary or unique keys to indicate what is the assumption that the view, uh, the view returns, what kind of granularity. It's particularly important if you'd like to join the, the view with something, uh, so you do not double results. Uh, Okay, challenge number 15. Can I modify this view? This is a uh, derivative from the, from the previous one. So again, was, what is it used for and who is the owner? Who should I talk to? Uh, I have a similar set of uh, device. Uh, again, describe the view, uh, what, what's the purpose, what's, uh, what do columns represent? Um, and, uh, after you are uh, you're done, after you ch uh, let's say you have added some column, 
uh, update the documentation. This is the very important uh, important thing to remember. The documentation needs to be updated. Okay, so there are many more challenges. This was my list and I hope you found it useful. Um, later on in questions, you can uh, ask, maybe uh, share your own challenges and I'll try to answer them. Let's, uh, let's get, uh, let's see how you can get started with data Ido and the documentation I just showed you uh, right away. Let me switch to, so this is a, um, so data Ido is a desktop tool that uh, produces the HTML export. Um, right, so if you would like to get started working with it, first download uh, the software from our website, install it. Currently we have a, a Windows uh, uh, installer. Uh, in the future we will uh, have also a online web portal, but that's in a couple of months. So install it. Then you need to create a repository. So repository is the is this uh, storage where you actually uh, create all the uh, all, where you store all your documentation, uh, where you, you import the metadata into, and where all the information is stored. So there are two types of repositories. There is a file repository that's very easy, quick uh, to get started. We don't need any, any additional. Um, software and there is a server repository server repository is a sql server database this is the advised uh, implementation uh, this is much better for uh, team working um, and performance also so you click a uh, new repository you provide a connection details uh, to the server uh, the repository gets created you, you you connect to it if you use file you just click this the file will be created and your your this is what you, you'll see. I have a number of uh, connections over here, but you'll just see it sample ones. So what you do next is you need to import metadata to the repository. So you need to provide the connections to your databases. So to do it, you click add, and you choose database connection. Um, you choose the, the engine that we have a number of uh, different native connectors. We also have a ODBC connector that uh, supports majority of the sources. Mm, the metadata is uh, doesn't always include everything. Uh, so if you have a native connector, it's device to use, use this. Then you provide the connection details, uh, click, click, hit connect. Uh, the database will be scanned and we will, and we will import uh, what you can see here. So list of tables, procedures, views, and so on. And in, uh, with that, you'll see also uh, all the uh, columns, their data types, uh, existing descriptions, um, foreign keys, uh, unique keys, triggers, and so on. So we have created, uh, we extracted what, uh, what we have found in the database. And now it's your turn. Uh, this is where documentation part uh, uh, starts. Um, okay, so what you can do to document uh, this, this schema is you can, let me choose another one, is you can provide a description for all the fields uh, and as well uh, tables. You can use, uh, uh, you can use a rich text editor, you can paste images over here, you can uh, paste uh, uh, text uh, from 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 Word or some websites. Uh, it will keep the formatting. Uh, yeah, you go through the list of columns. You document their their purpose. You can also provide the titles. Uh, although I I advise you to provide titles um, for uh, for the columns where and tables as well where it's not uh, obvious what the column represents. So calendar quarter is quite obvious. Let's skip that. But uh, in any case where it's not, you, you should provide a, uh, uh, the, the alternative title. So you can provide a description. You can also provide uh, another, uh, some set of other fields. 
those fields are defined by you. You can decide well, what kind of uh, data you'd like to, metadata you'd like to add to your documentation. So we have status. Yeah. This could be a lookup field. Uh, this could be like freehand text or, or some other types uh, of information. To help you with this task, we have created a, a progress of documentation and that shows you, let me, uh, so you can see that the, this, uh, mm, this database is not documented at all, uh, but you can see that AdventureWorks is documented almost entirely. And you can see here that this column is missing some, some descriptions. So th this number represent uh, descriptions for all the, all the elements. You can also narrow it down to uh, just uh, uh, table columns and Right, so you can see here that it's 90% and you, it's highlighted here that this uh, particular uh, column is missing description. Another thing that helps you uh, doc with the documentation is uh, the lookup, uh, the, the description hints. So we look at the column name and throughout the catalog, and then we suggest you uh, the existing descriptions from, from other tables. So we can quickly add the description, existing descriptions. It's very useful for fields like modified date where they are all the same. You can also go to the list of all the fields uh, with that name and also provide a description in bulk. That makes it much more easier. Okay, another thing you can do uh, is for tables and views as well, you can uh, provide unique keys and uh, foreign keys. So in this case, you can see that this appeal has a foreign key. Uh, this is a, uh, yeah, so uh, if you go to the data warehouse, okay, so this database has a for primary keys, but data warehouses mostly do not, uh, admins prefer not to uh, define it for uh, performance reasons. So what you do is to create a key by choosing uh, columns, choose the type of the key. Let's say that you know this this should be unique. You have just indicated that this column is unique. It doesn't impact your database. It is just in the repository for uh, people using the data, so they know that somebody who created this table or documented assumes that you know full date label is unique. It's quite useful information. Uh, another thing even more important are the relationships. So this is something I showed you. So we can uh, go through through the, oh yeah, that's not the best example, but let's uh, see some, right. Okay. ET load ID, for instance. Yeah, it's, it, it probably doesn't have a lookup table, but you can uh, uh, right click and define the relation. Uh, the interesting thing about this is you can uh, sh uh, explain the joins uh, even across the databases. So you can show how this uh, how this uh, is related to to tables in in a, in a separate documentation, right? So let's say that, yeah, it doesn't make sense, but assume it, it does. I have created right. If I go back, you can see that it is it is. Uh, reflected over here. It shows the name of the database. Okay. Another thing, uh, which I covered a lot in the, in my presentations are the modules. So modules are those folders you use to, um, group objects and also provide some, uh, descriptions for, uh, and some narrative to, for, for a piece of, of functionality, uh, yeah, it could be a documentation for a certain report or something in your system. So to create a module, you go to modules, you click new. When you have a module, you can go for, there, there's a number of ways to do it, but you can go through the list of tables and just drag and drop. You can also go through the list and create a new module Oh, sorry, that was not my intention. You can create a new module uh, and as automatically assign those uh, tables. You can assign a table to different modules. Uh, they could be even across documentation. So these are those logical folders you use um, 
to group um, and uh, or to group tables and other objects and provide additional the additional metadata more meaning to to those those objects. Uh, okay, and when you have a module, you can create a year diagram for the for the module. Uh, well, actually, it could uh, include uh, tables and views from from outside the um, the module. So you can drag and drop those tables. Those relationships are being uh, uh, included automatically. Uh, you can you can look up the tables. So let's say, yeah, I can. Uh, Build a diagram for for other include uh, objects from entire catalog, not just this this particular uh, database, right? This is quite convenient when I want to show how to uh, how how do the, how does the data relate across uh, all databases, right? So I can I don't know add some other database uh, table. I can choose which columns I'd like to show, and if it, there is no relationship, so I can use as well. Uh, the, this uh, this diagram tool to um, to in, to define those those relationships between the tables, right? So again, I have the same form. I can uh, create um, the relationships. Again, I'm just uh, not uh, actually taking. Uh, yeah, that, those relationships don't, do not uh, make sense, but it's just an example. You can see those manual ones, uh, so uh, with a dotted line, mm, those represent the, the the actual form keys from the database. Okay, so um, I've uh, so I've taken some time. I've created that, and now it's time to share it with 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 my team. This is where the value uh, is is generated. So you can actually make uh, get everyone aware of, of the database and make it easy for everybody to work with it. It's easier for to onboard new people. It's easier to, you know, it, it, it it's so much easier for your uh, key people to get more time. Uh, you know, people do not have to ask questions. So let's click uh, export. We have a number of formats, but the, the, the advice one is the HTML. Then you, you just go through the wizard. Uh, we ask you a few questions, which databases you'd like to include, which uh, fields and so on. Let me go to switch to the uh, to the uh, document I have previously generated. So uh, you, what you can see here, so th this is a, a plain HTML document. It's interactive, so you can see I can navigate it, but it doesn't require any kind of uh, server. You can host it on any web server. Uh, you can uh, run it from your disk. You can share it in a shared folder. So it's very easy to 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 share this this documentation. And you can, as I showed you, it's searchable. Right. I can also uh, find uh, specific columns. Right. Customer ID. In this case, I found it. Right. So all of this I have built previously. Uh, it's, it's here, it's, uh, I can navigate it, uh, so foreign keys, right? I can see those, those modules uh, and I can see the diagrams I have created for, for those modules. Those module uh, ear diagrams are also interactive, so I can navigate that as well. Right, uh, so you can create this documentation even if you have just exported the plain metadata because if you have some descriptions existing in a database you can uh, you can share them right away so to get this document it takes a couple of minutes so install create a repository or just create a file um, pr provide the connections and import the the schema from your databases and generate this document and share it with your colleagues that gives you uh, a lot, a lot of value within just a couple of uh, minutes. Okay, that is all I wanted to show you regarding the, the tool. Yeah, so this is just a summary of what I just showed you. And that's for the presentation. Let me see your questions now. Yeah, I already see there are some questions which are quite long. Mm.
Okay, Lauren asks, uh, this was very helpful. How does it feel fit in uh, with data asset register then? My company uses these three terms interchangeably, but they, they always produce the data dictionary in all three situations. Uh, this is, well, this is a data catalog, a metadata repository, database documentation tool. It has a lot of names. So I think it's the same thing. What uh, DataIDO, uh, yeah, it's the main asset we manage are, um, is, are the data assets imported automatically from the database. We also import the, the codes, the uh, procedures and, and, and other things we find in the database. We also allow you to build uh, a data dictionary and link this uh, to, to your data assets. This is a slightly um, off topic. It's not, it's, it's outside of uh, what I wanted to show you today, but this is something you could call a data catalog or data metadata repository or data asset register. I think there are different names for the same thing. Uh, okay, we have a question from Lauren. Uh, how is data dictionary different from business glossary? Uh, what I have described here seems to be data dictionary. Uh, how do we roll this up into business glossary? So. Okay, that's a good question. I um, actually, you can find in our webinar page, a webinar on the business glossary and uh, how to link it with data dictionary. So what I what I discussed today is just data dictionary plus uh, scripts, right? right? Uh, database code is outside of the data dictionary itself. But what I have presented are, is essentially data dictionary. Data dictionary is a uh, registry, uh, database of all the data sets and their elements, so tables and columns or files and uh, fields and, and so on. You, you understand the idea. Plus additional information like descriptions, uh, joins, uh, unique keys and so on. So what I have shown is pure data dictionary. Business glossary, however, uh, is something completely uh, different. Uh, the, the business glossary is a specification, is a, yeah, documentation of business terms. So data dictionary describes the physical data, so data sets, and business glossary um, documents uh, the terms uh, as the business organization or industry understands them. Uh, this is unrelated to a specific data source. So uh, let's say a customer, you can have a multiple customer uh, tables in multiple systems, data warehouse, CRM, ordering system, and so on but there is just one term customer and how your the company understands it. So um, uh, what is being done in the modern metadata management and what Dataido provides you, uh, uh, allows you to do is to define those both. Uh, actually, I can uh, show you the business glossary. So business glossary is this. Uh, uh, so these are data dictionaries. Uh, those are tables and business glossary is a list of terms and you have a definition of the term, right? And you can see that it's linked to the specific tables uh, in this case and columns in this, this case, right? You can navigate uh, across, uh, right? So business glossary and data dictionary are two different uh, metadata assets and you can map them uh, together to make a more meaningful understanding of your, of your data environment. Okay, let's see if there are other questions. Uh, okay, uh, Georgi asks, can we say G GDPR data fields in the tables from the uh, from other data with some kind of filter and after we export in separate uh, uh, documentary for GDPR purpose only? Okay, we have another this is something I, I didn't show you, but we have a module for data classification. So if you, you it allows you to search through the catalog and uh, find the data fields that potentially hold, uh, let me let me run it and see what it generates. Right, so these are the fields uh, grouped by the column name, right? So account number, uh, what we think is a personal data and is a bank account uh, information. So when I save it, uh, let me save it. 
I will have a number of uh, additional fields, GDPR classification and data domain. So this is what we think those data represents. You can uh, override it manually, right? Um, yeah, this information will be included in the in the export. Um, if you if you use some custom reporting or you can uh, drill down to our database, so you have a repository in the database, you can list those fields easily. You can run this report, uh, right? So uh, data classification explorer, and yeah, if you choose GDPR, then you have all those those fields, and you can yeah, you can basically copy this, and this is your uh, in repository of the GDPR information. Okay, I do not see uh, more questions. Uh, I hope that was insightful. And what you can do is to go to our website, uh, download the, the tool. We have a 30 day free trial. So you can try all this, what I've just showed you and uh, you know build a repository, share documentation, um, find personal data. Okay. That was it. I hope it was very useful for you. Hope to see you in uh, future webinars. Thank you very much and goodbye.